welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode three of Curiosities of the Natural History Museum. So behind me is a very important specimen. Now this was the first complete dinosaur found in England and one of the first dinosaurs ever found. So this was found back in the early 1900s by a man called Reginald Walter Hooley. Now this dinosaur actually had a name change recently. So it used to be thought to be an Iguanodon dinosaur, but it actually got renamed as Mantellisaurus. So when it got renamed in 2007 as a Mantellisaurus, it became the holotype for this specimen, which means it was the first of its kind. And this specimen behind me is actually used to describe all the other specimens. So researchers and scientists need to use this specimen on a very regular basis to actually compare and contrast other discoveries to actually check what species they're dealing with. Now, the interesting thing about this dinosaur, it was, a, it was a herbivore, so we can look at the skull and we see that it's quite a small skull and we can also analyze its teeth and things like that. And the majority of this skeleton is real bone, which is quite amazing for dinosaurs because usually we only find a few of their bones and we have to replicate the other ones. But this one is pretty much all bone, apart from the skull. Now we do have the skull bones, but they're made up of lots of different pieces. And so they put them all together, they took a cast, and that's how we get the beautiful skull behind me. But that is not actually real bone. So the Mantellosaurus lived during the early Cretaceous period. And now this dinosaur was herbivorous, which basically means it lived off a diet of plants and ferns. So it didn't actually eat meat. It's found in 1914 on the Isle of Wight by Reginald Walter Hooley. And now if we take a look at the bones, these are, most of these are real bones, which is just awesome. Instead of a thumb, it actually has a claw, which is a typical thick feature of the dinosaur's iguanodon, which is what this was thought to be for the first 80 years of its life, before it got renamed in 2007 as a Mantellisaurus, after the Dr. Gideon, Gideon Mantell, that's the name. <laughs> so if we look at the bones behind me, so this is 80 to 90% real bone. Only a small fraction of it is actually cast. But these shorter arms at the front kind of look like this dinosaur would have had a kangaroo-like stance when it was moving around. But recent scientific studies have suggested that it actually was semi-quadrupedal, which means it would actually use all four of its limbs. But when it was slow moving or kind of like standing still would be when it would use all four. And when it was moving faster, it would probably only use two. Now this dinosaur is from the early Cretaceous period and was found in what we now call Western Europe. Now, if we take into consideration the process of continental drift, which I'll explain very briefly, but basically the Earth's crust is split into lots and lots of plates. Now, these move and break apart. And so back in time, 100 million years ago, the continents that we see today were very different to how they are. And so we can find fossils across continents. So one coastline might have a fossil, and a coastline miles and miles away might also have the same fossil, which is confusing. But if we go back in time, those continents were joined together, which is why we get fossils split apart like that. And so that's why paleoenvironmental reconstructions is a really kind of interesting study, like study to do, because you reconstruct those past continents and you work out kind of the relationships of where these creatures actually lived and how they lived. So this specimen is a holotype, which means it was the first specimen to describe a new species, which is extremely important to science, and scientists will come all over the world to look at this singular Mantellisaurus specimen, because they'll use this one behind me to compare with other discoveries to actually see if what they're finding is the same species. So that's what's really awesome about this specimen. Now that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you did. My social media will be linked down below as well if you'd like to follow me on there, along with some sources of what I use to create this video. But thank you again to the History Museum for letting me explore their wonderful collections. And if there's anything you'd like to see in the future, don't hesitate to comment down below and I can make some videos on it. But thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll see you next week.